In this video, I'm going to be servicing this JVC MV150. It's a DVD recorder slash VHS combo unit. And the thing I'm going to be servicing is clean the head, the tape path, and clean that mode switch underneath the um, transport. And these are not as hard as like the Foo Nines and stuff like that. These are actually pretty easy. But there's an interesting story behind this one. Now, originally, I sold customer uh, MV100. I go on my eBay page and I notice I got a negative feedback on it, which I kind of got thought was strange because I completely serviced that unit. And I know both deck works and so there was no problems with it. So I read the feedback instead of getting upset about it. It looked at it and I noticed that his complaint wasn't actually about the unit not working or nothing like that. The complaint was mainly about the DVD recorder not being able to read and unlock it. Because I guess he has a 150B already and he was able to reach and unlock it with a code using the remote control and powering on and off the deck and stuff like that and was able to get a reach and unlock it. doesn't work with the 100 apparently. And then there's a couple other things like on the up converter is not as good as the 150 and so forth. But he says the deck actually works fine and stuff like that. No problem. So he didn't realize though at the time that the actual um feedback he left wasn't for the product but was actually for the seller and i had to explain that to him and he was sorry about it he really wasn't actually gave me a hard time at all and he wasn't even trying to return the machine or anything he was actually gonna keep the machine but i remember digging through my pile i happened to have an mv150 and i showed him pictures and stuff like that i told him Instead, how about that you do actually return it and I'll go ahead and send you out an MV150 instead, the one that you have already. And once he found out that I had a 150, he wanted it. He's like, just service it, whatever, and send that one out. And then, you know, of course, he already sent out the 100. So once I get the 100, then I'll go ahead and send him this one out. So I'm just going to do a complete service, make sure the heads are clean. The tape path is clean, the molds, gear, and on these it's pretty easy, it's an LG, this whole thing's made by LG actually. And to remove that, you just remove the six screws and you can literally pop the whole entire transport up. It's no screws underneath the main board, like on the Foo Nines and stuff like that. So that's what we're going to be doing on this video, we're going to be servicing the VHS side. So the first thing you do have to do is take the front panel off, which is clips. You just, you know, lift these clips gently and you can move the whole front panel like that. There's no cables or anything like that. And then there's going to be four screws holding the transport down. Two in the rear. There's going to be two in the front. You don't need to move anything. They're accessible right there through the slots there. You can see how they slotted it so you can fit a screwdriver there. And then you remove the tops on there. Once you remove all six screws, which are right there. Then you just need to remove this cable for the audio tracking head right there. You just go ahead and remove that out. And then you literally can just lift the whole entire transport straight up and that's it. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'll just go and pull this here. And then you can loosen it. I just don't want to do because there is a connector there. So trying to do this with one hand is kind of tricky. But literally, that's all it is. And see, that's where you're... Head connects to the head amplifier. And then there's the mode switch we're gonna be cleaning right there. We're gonna go and just pop that off, clean the contacts, and then go ahead and service the transport pretty much. So I'll be right back with you once I get this popped off as I don't wanna break it. As you can see, went ahead and popped the contacts off the mode gear. And all you have to do is you can take a small precision flat screwdriver under there or your fingernail and just pop that straight out. And as you can see, none of the clips are broken, so go right back on, no bra. It's a little bit oxidized, as you can see, but it's not too bad. And the reason why it's not too bad, because this was my machine. I actually used it a few times, so, you know, had a chance to move around and stuff like that. So it never really got oxidized and stuff like that badly. So this one's not a bad one at all. And normally when they go and start oxidizing, these will start darkening and stuff. And that's when they start having an issue. But if you use the machines, one way to keep these from going bad is to use the machine at least once a month or so forth. This has a chance to rotate around and it scrapes against that metal, keeping the oxidation from building up. And it'll actually keep them working. That's how you keep the Foo Nines and all the other ones that have problems with the mold gear from actually going bad. When you let a VCR sits, that's when they tend to go bad. So I'm gonna go and clean this up. 
for as far as chemical, you can use deoxid, you can use alcohol, you can use a metal cleaner. You can clean this all up. Then just put new dielectric grease on there and then go ahead and just pop that right back on there and then make sure you got an alignment mark, of course, and that it is aligned and then you can put the transport right back on. Once you get your contacts clean, that's how they should look. Nice and silverish with no oxidation on it. And then you can go ahead and put a couple dabs of dielectric grease inside the contacts, spin it around a few times, align it, and you'll be good to go. So I went ahead and finished reassembling the mode gear. And when you time the mode gear, you want it pretty much facing towards the second lead right here. And the reason for that is because this nub right here has to slot into this cam gear right here pretty much. And that's where it's gonna slot in. This is the centering pin and then the nub's gonna go right into here. You can kind of take a look at everything on the bottom of the transport pretty much and how it's timed. And that's also the thing too, you wanna to go ahead and check to make sure everything's timed, which it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble this back together. Another thing too you wanna to do is, you wanna go ahead and clean these two spring contacts because that actually contacts the transport when the head assembly goes back in there and that takes the static away from the head. So you wanna go ahead and give that a good cleaning and kind of bend these springs a little bit upwards so it makes better contact on the transport. So I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble this and I'll be right back once I'm done. So I went ahead and pretty much reassembled the whole VHS deck and also cleaned the heads in the tape path. To clean the heads, you just go ahead and dab this in alcohol. You hold this up against the head like that and then you can rotate the heads as the heads move past the paper or go and take the dirt and tape box it off the heads. That's the safest and best way to clean heads and that way you don't gotta worry about cotton swab, for example, with the little pieces getting stuck in the head and stuff, which I have seen a lot when servicing machines because people will use sometimes a cotton swab to do it. And even if you careful and don't necessarily snap off the head, what will happen is those little fibers get caught into the head and stuff like that and you might not see it. It could cause, you know, not as good picture and so forth or even damage the head and stuff. So it's best to use a piece of paper while doing it and just rotate the head and let the head pass around the paper where the alcohol is. And then you'll see as it does, if it's dirty, that the, you'll see like black lines, of course, and stuff like that, and you know you clean the heads. Now, as far as cleaning everything else, for that, you can use cotton swab, or you can even just use, you know, microfiber cloth or something like that that's similar. Put alcohol on there and just clean all the tape guides and everything, as you can see, they're pretty clean. Also go and give the, Pinch roll some rubber rejuvenator, clean that up too as well. And then clean the heads and stuff like that. Make sure there's no tape oxid or anything like that. Also go ahead and clean the sensors while you're at it too and so forth. And you pretty much maintenance your VHS deck. That's all that's really needed for these things. The grease is fine on there. There's plenty of grease on the bottom and on the top and stuff like that. And like I said, this machine completely worked. There was no problem. I'll go ahead and clean some of the dirt and stuff that's on the bottom of it. But let's just say if this was dry and there was no grease on there, then you could put some molly grease on the track right there or some silicone and just go ahead and, you know, grease the tracks pretty much. And all you need is a little bit. You don't need too much. You don't want too much to the point where, you know, tape could accidentally contact it or whatever the case is and causing the worst problem. Just put enough on the slide where it slides up and down and you're good on the P-guides at least and stuff. But everything's ready to go, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the front panel on and we'll test it. There was nothing wrong with it, so this is pretty much it. So went ahead and put the front panel on just to quickly test the VHS side, just to make sure it still works, even though it was working fine before. But we're just gonna go and do a quick test. Now I can only show playback only because I don't have the remote control on me. So it does play. As you can see, it's a nice clean picture. So it is fully functional pretty much. Like I said, I would show you rewind and forward, but I don't have the remote control down here with me right now. But it is working, so. Still works. So the next thing we're gonna do is just quickly service the DVD recorder. I'm gonna go ahead and clean the laser assembly. For that, you don't want to use any harsh chemicals like 99% alcohol or anything like that because on certain lenses, you can actually want go ahead and fog it up and actually make it worse. For that, you just want to go ahead and use glass cleaner pretty much, a little bit, 
and then you go and just wipe the laser clean real quick with a q-tip and then that's it you don't want to use any harsh chemicals on there because you can damage the laser or something you don't want to push too hard on it either just do a light dip with the alcohol swab and windex or something do a quick wipe and you're done that's it that's all you need to do and then take the dry and make sure it's dry of course and then the other common issue with these is actually the two micro switches that detect when the doors open and close on these. On almost all these MV100s and 150, I noticed that they get oxidized and when they get oxidized, what will happen is, is this door right here will just stay in the open position by itself without you having to push it. And even if you push close, it'll just pop right back open again. And that's due to the two spring micro switches that's right under this when I take it apart, I'll show you. They get oxidized and all you have to do is just put some deoxid on there, work them back and forth. You can take it apart too, but you got to be very careful because they are spring loaded. So once you take it apart, just go ahead and clean the contacts, pretty much put it back together and it'll work good as new and open and close. Now I did this when I originally got this, so it's fine. So I'm just going to go and clean the laser and be done with it pretty much. So I went ahead and removed the DVD recorder out of the machine and to do that there's just four silver screws holding it down. Then you remove the three cables that's down here and the one cable going to the HDMI converter right up there. To remove this top cover right here off the mechanism to get access to the laser for cleaning and so forth, you just go and remove these two different color screws. They're not as silver, it's a kind of brass type color. So you go ahead and remove that. And then now remove the top cover off and then you can be able to access it. Now to get this tray out, simply what you have to do, you'll see emergency release right there. And news you'll be slid over here. You just go and take something like a flat pin or a pin or something small enough and slide it over, which I'm going to do right now. Just give me a second. Slide it all the way over this way here. And once you slide it all the way over, you'll be able to pretty much slide it out. And then you see those tabs holding it right there. You just gently lift there, gently lift there. And then you'll be able to remove the tray pretty much. And now you get access to everything to clean it. Now the two switches that control the jet, the new ones underneath here. And hold on, let me go ahead and move the gear assembly over. And we're gonna go and do that now so I can see if we can show you. You can see that pushes one switch there, but you actually can't really see the other switch. But there's two of them. You actually kind of see it right there. So one there and one there. Those are the two micro switches that end up getting oxidized and usually causes the tray to open by itself and stay open. To clean that, you just go ahead and take some deoxid or contact cleaner, spray in there a little bit with, you know, of course, the red tip that they give you to direct the spray into the actual switches. Work it back and forth a few times. You can just slide that back and forth. Make sure when you get ready to put the tray back on though, you got this slid all the way this way, the way I have it right now, because otherwise this won't be aligned. It got to slot into that alignment slot. That if you look at right, well, it's this one right here, it slots into there and it rides in there as it goes in. That's how it opens and closes it pretty much. So make sure you got that slot in right, otherwise you're gonna mess up the alignment pretty much. Now what you wanna do too after that is go ahead and clean the laser and you just use a Q-tip or a little bit of Windex on it. Wipe around the laser, don't you have to be rough, just go ahead and do a light rub on it. Once you do that, take the dry in and then dry it. And then you wanna also clean the spindle right here and you wanna remove any dust, debris, whatever that's on that. So that way when the disc sits, it actually sits flatter on there and then the focusing mechanism doesn't have to work as hard to track the disc and stuff like because it's sitting flat if you got a bunch of junk on there then the disc kind of sits kind of warpish as it's going fast it causes the focusing mechanism to actually work harder so you want to go and clean that as well and any dust and debris in there and then you could just reassemble and you're done so went ahead and finished reinstalling the dvd recorder back into the machine the front panel and everything and here's the four screw, silver screws I was telling you have to do to in order to remove it. Those are the four screws and where they go. And then the two brass color screws that's on top of the silver screws are what holds this actual cover to the actual drive mechanism. So you want to go and put those back all in. The three cables right there. And then the one cable that goes to the HDMI board right there. 
So we're going power on and tested. It did work before, so it's no reason why it shouldn't. I just did a preventer maintenance pretty much on this. We'll go and open it. We two powers on. It does take time on this one. There you go. And we'll put a DVD in there. One that's particularly hard to read on purpose. There you go, it is reading the disc. And this is how it should sound. It sounds pretty healthy. And you can hear it picked it up right away pretty much. And there you go, it did pick it up as an RW. And now we can just push play and it will play it. And as you can see, it is playing with recorded on the RW. So it is working. We'll go ahead and stop there because I don't want no copyrights. But we'll put a strike in there if they do match it, so I don't want that. But it does work, and that's pretty much how you service one of these JVC MV150s. And this concludes the video. Here you go, went ahead and fully reassembled it and did clean it up a little bit. I also cleaned the lens and Made sure I cleaned all the dust and everything out of there. So I'll go ahead and just do a quick demonstration. You can see how nice bright that is now. I'm going to wait till it starts playing. And there you go. It is fully functional now. And there you go, picked up the hi fi track. So there you go, now it's ready to go pretty much, so this concludes the video.